Okay, well, I'm Marsha Cooper. I live in Newton, Massachusetts. I grew up in New Jersey, came up here, taught art at, to uh, in a school for uh, kids with learning challenges. And so I was an art teacher for many years. And I, uh, as my, and I had two grown children and as they were growing up, I had been involved with PTO volunteer activities and uh, gradually I, I decided to do a little volunteer work for this organization, Green Newton, that was founded 33 years ago almost. And when they founded it, it was a group of people who said that they were going to devote 10 years, a decade, to fighting uh, global warming at the time. And so they thought that they would solve it all in 10 years. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I would say about uh, 18 years ago, I became more engaged in uh, low key volunteer work as my kids were growing up. And then eventually I joined the board of Green Newton. And uh, then they were desperate for somebody to lead the group because <laughs> they didn't have, it's a volunteer thing. And I thought, oh, I tried for a year. But the truth is I'm someone who doesn't really like public speaking although I've gotten used to it, but anyway, I kind of got used to that. And uh, and I, so for 14 years, I've been the president of Green Newton and I've learned a lot and really been uh, uh, rewarded with working with a lot of wonderful people. So one thing I learned is that there's always people out there who are concerned about climate change and they don't know what to do about it. And so when they become engaged in our work, generally they feel better about it. And that applies in large part to uh, young people, to let's say teens in particular, who are feeling uh, some uh, you know, worry about climate change. And if they find activities that, that lead towards solutions, even if they know it's a small way, uh, they feel better. You know, it's just, uh, and that's why I do this work. I've learned a lot and I still do my artwork. I have, fun, I have time in my life for uh, online Zumba and I read and walk and do all kinds of activities, but really the majority of my time is devoted to this work. And, uh, and it's always rejuvenated because there's a team of people working on it. So uh, my point is that, you know, when you make connections with people that are focused on solutions on the local level, on the state level, um, that's mainly where we're focused on the uh, local and state level. So I'm sharing my screen here, uh, and this is our website, and it's hard to narrow down. You know, we're, as I said, we're a local group. We're a, a Although it's a good size, Newton is a city, and there's about 85,000 people, maybe about 33,000 homes and apartments, whatever. And so uh, what do we do? What can a person on a local level do? Okay, so uh, I'll take one area at a time, and I'll start with advocacy. So uh, we work very closely with city leaders and uh, we meet them, we, uh, we connect with them in various ways, sometimes going to like a village day fair. You know, you introduce yourself to them. I'm uh, so-and-so and I'm with this group and I'm very concerned about what we can do for climate solutions. And so in Newton, it led up to the uh, city leaders passing a climate action plan, which was a, a big accomplishment. And we're seeing other communities doing this. What you do in one community and you, and you share that information with other uh, people from other communities. And by the way, I, it's not just Green Newton, um, it, I meet with uh, Massachusetts Climate Action Network, for instance. So there are state groups and, uh, and we share ideas. 
So in Newton, as I said, we came up with a climate action plan. And so there are, there are goals in that plan, you know, and some of them, I'll give you examples, like how many people are getting home energy assessments and adding insulation to their homes and air sealing them. In Massachusetts, there's a program called Mass Save. There may be one in Maine uh, along that line. And there's all kinds of incentives for people to get home energy assess assessments and weatherize their homes. If there isn't, that's something that people in Maine could be advocating for. Uh, another thing that uh, in the, in the, from the Climate Action Plan is that there's a goal set that we're going to transition off of fossil fuel to, and that means uh, more electrification of heating and cooling a home. So uh, I'm going to point to here, uh, that's heat pump technology. So anyone who wants to learn about strategies for making progress towards climate solutions, could use our website as an example of uh, um, what the steps are that people can take to, I'm gonna open up, you see this says, take action, do these things to lower your climate impact. So this is, uh, let me open that up so you can take a look at it. Uh, so if you can see, and we share this, information with other groups. As a matter of fact, we were helped on this take action tool with an organization called Mass Energize. There's a lot of collaboration. You know, you can't get stuff like this done unless you really collaborate. So these are actions that people can take. We want them to insulate their homes. These are things to make a difference. Eat more of a plant-based diet. Electrify your ride. Use your car less. Buy less stuff. That's easy. Um, update heating and cooling. Heat pump technology is, is the best thing uh, to do. Um, adjust the thermostat. You know, that's a big one that I've been focusing in on uh, because uh, let's say you're not in a position, uh, heat pump technology can be costly. But the wonderful thing about adjusting the thermostat is that uh, you can save money, you save energy. So put a sweater, a lot of clothes on uh, you know, in the winter and dress comfortably in the summer. There's uh, things you can do, you know, to make yourself feel more comfortable. Spray yourself with water, I don't know. But, you know, to, to a degree, you know, the, within reason. We're not saying, you know, if it's 95 degrees, don't put on it air conditioner but anyway so this is an example anyone who wants to see uh the steps that they can take can uh can look at green newton's website you don't have to live in newton massachusetts this is to be shared with anybody living anywhere put solar on your rooftop if you can uh reduced wasted on electricity that's uh i don't i have one down here you can turn off a bunch of uh, devices at one time with a sour with a, a power surge protector. Plant a tree. You know, uh, Green Newton had a, a, a young woman, college a senior, come to us uh, in just be like at the end of 2020 with an idea to plant trees to honor lives lost to COVID. And this one woman, young woman, she's now, she's graduated, but she orchestrated a project where we raised over $50,000 to plant over 220 trees. And the city planted them, actually, city of Newton. And uh, they're taking care of the watering of them for, uh, for two years. So anybody can be a leader. That's what, when I first became uh, the president of Green Newton, I didn't even know really what everyone did in the, in the group and I made it my business to, to learn it. And so learning is the first step in uh, becoming uh, a leader, even in the smallest way. 
if you learn about, uh, let's see if it's on here. Uh, I know uh, induction cooking, for instance, uh, that's another, I don't know if it's on here. I don't, I don't see it, uh, but uh, I'll go back to the homepage. Um, you don't have to necessarily spend a huge uh, fortune uh, to, oops, let me get back to that. Um, you don't have to spend a fortune necessarily to make adjustments. Like let's say you don't want to rely on gas to cook. There's uh, induction cooktops that cost about $60. You do need magnetic cookware. And so I bought uh, some different pots. Uh, they were about $40 each really. And so I make oatmeal, pasta, all my cooking pretty much is uh, relying on this little cooktop that costs $60. So I'm relying less on gas that, uh, you know, if you wanna learn more about that, if you go to Green Newton's website, such a good resource, you can type in induction and it will tell you all about in induction cooktops. So um, we were mainly a grassroots organization until very recent years. Um, people came on our board who have more sophisticated organization, nonprofit experience with fundraising. And they were insisting that if we could raise funds, we would have a bigger impact. And I was concerned that um, if we spend our time raising funds to pay somebody to raise funds, then we're, are we really getting our projects done? And I came to learn that it does make a difference. You know, it's uh, we have increased our impact in the community, but our grassroots work is the biggest force, I would say. So you can do a lot on a very slim budget. And again, it's a lot of, it takes networking, but anyone who feels like concerned about um, climate change, it's the most therapeutic activity uh, to be able to connect with people and say, we can lower our greenhouse gas emissions if people take certain steps. So um, in our city of Newton, they ended up, um, we advocated for it. Um, we, uh, the city hired an energy coach. And so uh, a lot of what the energy coach is uh, to um, help people to get their home energy assessment. We also have, by the way, an EV task force that we're putting together a list that I can share with anybody. It's on the verge of being ready of every electric vehicle model and hybrid vehicle, a plug-in hybrid vehicle model and their costs and coming out for at this time of the year. So these are a lot of volunteers who are doing this work to provide information that people can use because a lot of times people don't know where to begin so you see the four top climate actions that we have are insulate your house, electrify your ride, update heating and cooling, go solar. If you delve into any of these, like let's take, uh, that's the heat pump. I'm not gonna open it because it's, I think a little too much for this little talk that I'm doing, but is a whole wealth of information about why it's good to uh, think, consider heat pump technology. You guys up in Maine, you know, you probably wanna know that I believe it's, um, they're good, the heat pumps, most of them, there's different types like Mitsubishi is a brand. Uh, it's, uh, they're good supposedly to, thir to 13 below zero. Um, but so people can keep a backup system of gas, but that's a different territory. Remember, I'm an art teacher. I was a mom. I, you know, I, I didn't learn all this in one year. I've been studying it. I still am no expert. And so we, we rely on people who do have expertise in these uh, areas to, uh, they're called energy coaches. And so people are welcome to 
you know, even from outside of Newton, if anyone ever has a question, I will never be any students, any human being who has a question that will improve energy efficiency and bring down greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions, I would be glad to connect with, you know, in any way. So um, I mentioned the energy coach that we had in Newton. Uh, well, we, uh, there were students in Newton who had a project and they helped college students who were funded by a grant program in the state of Massachusetts. And they did research to determine if you look at a pie chart and uh, you figure out what percentage of greenhouse gas emissions come from how we use energy in our homes and how and our transportation in Newton, and it probably is somewhat similar up where you live in Maine, is um, uh, in Newton, it's about 60% of our greenhouse gas emissions, not the city hall, not the schools, although we need to be um, care, you know, careful with that. But so individuals need to understand that these things that they do, if they get an electric vehicle, if they put solar on their home, if they uh, heat with heat pump technology, if they uh, take these steps, walk and bike more, less relying on the car, eat a plant-based diet, it can all make a difference if people buy into it. I also speak to my friends uh, a little bit. I can, they can only take so much of this. <laughs> so, but anyone watching this is already somebody who's, who's given thought to how can I make a difference? And so the, even there's little things that, uh, and if you do it in a way where you're kind of lighthearted about it, which is my, my approach, that you don't, uh, I, hope, I hope anyway, that you don't uh, turn people off. I'll give you an example. I was in a little uh, supermarket in Newton and uh, some guy was buying this big package of paper towels. And he said, are these paper towels really special? And the, the clerk behind the counter you know, really didn't know what he was talking about. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, they're so expensive. And $8 is something for this roll. And I said, actually, you don't have to spend anything. Because what if to consider using a reusable cloth next to your sink? You wash your hands. You rinse them, whatever. They're clean tap tap on the cloth and you haven't used a paper towel. So I thought he was gonna say my true business lady or something like that, but he said, that's a good idea. I'm gonna tell my wife about it. Of course, his wife probably didn't buy into it so readily, but he was interested in saving money and it never occurred to him that he doesn't have to use paper towels or paper, you know, people get, uh, you know, make a big deal about using cloth napkins again. You know, we're not digging our hands into a plate of spaghetti, you know, you're using a knife and fork and if you rinse your hands or whatever, tap it on the napkin. I, we, my husband and I use the same napkin. We never got sick from it. We use the same cloth napkin. I don't even use a napkin actually uh, half the time. And I don't get, I'm healthy. I haven't had a cold in seven years. I had a knock on wood. I haven't gotten COVID yet. So people can make, take steps that are easy. Use, we have an, a, a saying in Newton, use less, green the rest. Uh, that came, I have to give credit to uh, an organization called Mothers Out Front, another group that we collaborate with. Uh, we collaborate with 350. That's a group that anyone's ever heard of. Uh, so many groups and I, you know, I think you can probably pick up that I have a, a very consistent feeling of joy, except, of course, sorrow from a lot of news that you hear, you know, particularly like the hurricane uh, stories and other, you know, there's a lot of sadness in our lives. But I, because I'm so focused in on this work, 
And I just feel a tremendous amount of joy, you know, when people are taking steps, like no matter what, it doesn't matter to me one drop in the bucket, I don't think about it. And I think that uh, since I started this work over the 14 years, you know, we, we've helped thousands of people in Newton to get their home energy assessments. Uh, not everybody can go solar, but we've helped uh, a couple of hundred people at least to put solar on their roof. We're helping people now to get EVs, and of course it helps gas prices are higher. So people, you know, don't are more interested in EVs. Whatever it takes, uh, these are, uh, this is some of the work we're doing. You see, uh, flipping through on our homepage, uh, this changes every week. We have an e-news bulletin, and you're welcome to sign up to it for it because just for the sake of learning what we're, what our events are, what we're planning. Uh, here, we're featuring a business, that, uh, a local business that just uh, uh, opened up. Uh, we have a green expo coming. We we uh, featuring this is organized by a food pantry, a ride for food, so it's a bike riding uh, event. Oh, um, zoning is a big issue in Newton because we, we are a city, but people think of it like the suburbs and it's a pretty community. It's a well-to-do community, although it's not everybody, you know, is not uh, in that position. But uh, envir environmental people in Newton, advocates, are advocating for more dense, sustainable housing in uh, village centers. Newton has, it's called, uh, our, our city of Newton has 14 villages. And, you know, not like a village in the Alps or something like that, you know, <laughs> they're called villages. It's suburban homes. And uh, we try to tell people that if we, if we don't do this, if we don't create more affordable, dense housing in our village centers that is accessible, to public transportation, then we're creating, we're, we're encouraging sprawl. So the people have to move further out and drive long distances to get to work and, and whatever. So uh, that's um, one of the issues we work on here. Uh, we praise people if they do something good in the community or our mayor does some good work. As a matter of fact, I'm meeting with the mayor of Newton tomorrow. I've um, I uh, am, she invited me to her office because she knows that uh, that I've got a voice in this community, and so she wants me on her side. She's great, she's fabulous mayor. And uh, here's uh, here's one little story about her is that and what a good leader can do is that when she used to be a city councilor. And it was about 14 years ago, someone, uh, a, a BU, a Boston College professor wrote an article in our newsletter at the time, it was just a printed newsletter about energy efficient street lighting. And she was, we sent it without them being asked, we sent it to every city councilor. Newton has four, 24 city councilors, so it's a big she was one person who called me and she said she was interested to learn more about it. So one, I was surprised. I didn't really know her then. I was surprised that she read our newsletter. You know, a lot of people in these grassroots groups, they're talking to each other and it's, you really need to make the connections with the city leaders. So she called us and the next thing you know, I mean, it wasn't the next thing you know, but it was uh, probably about, uh, two years later, that 8,400 street lights in Newton were changed to energy efficient lights. So, uh, you know, when I talked about uh, this is the green building principles, a lot of people automatically think that putting solar on the roof is the best thing you can do, which, of course, putting solar on a roof is a very good thing to do. But um, you want to we we're uh want to electrify buildings rather than rely on oil or gas and uh embodied carbon are the materials that you use for building 
Uh, so these are these are the green building principles here. A lot of this is under these uh, heads up here, like our work, we advocate for green building principles, green transportation principles. We want bike lanes and pedestrian safe walkways. We work with the schools. Uh, we sponsored a Earth Day festival. Now, no one should, uh, who's just starting out should get again overwhelmed because you gradually build up the, uh, the teamwork that goes into doing these things. I am so excited about it that it's hard for me to turn it off at night. Like I'm the idea person uh, and, and having art in my, in my brain, I'm thinking now, like instead of handing people a flyer or yakking to them and they're hearing blah, 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 I'm trying to think of unique ways to get their attention. So for instance, um, I might close this for a minute if I can find it easily. Um, I have, I'll show you one thing. What a fun project this was. Okay, I'm not going to bring it up, but visualize a bike like this that's been painted completely. And you put sunflowers on it and butterflies. And in the center, you put that pie chart, a pie chart here that shows how we use energy. And you take it to events and that's a way to catch people's attention we call it uh, it's uh, we had students work on it they painted on a bar here green your ride and so it was another way to like engage people in thinking of what they can do what's their role it's not you don't suffer at all you know and if you go for a bike ride you feel good if you walk you get exercise if you leave your if you leave your reusable bag in the car, you'll burn a couple of calories walking back to the car to get the bag. You hear people say, oh, I left the bag in the car. Then they'll go to the gym and get their exercise. So it's just a way of thinking differently, you know, that the actions you take and with good humor, not like, oh, I gotta walk back to the car and get my bag or I've got to throw a nap, a cloth napkin in the laundry. These are all really good things that can make a difference. So uh, I know I've been talking for a, about 30 minutes and I, I can take a break. And if you have any questions, uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Um, Marsha, I'm curious about the the first screen you showed us, the take action screen, and there was a spot to click on done. So do or info. Do you, I'll show you the info. Yeah, do you um do you know how many people have sort of engaged with this and, and clicked on done and sort of use it as a checklist and um do, do you track that I guess. um the the mass energized folks i think do i've been trying to get the information from them anytime i meet with a young person a, a student who's interested in uh youth leadership for in the environment i ask them to sit down with their families because i think it's like such a good activity so every one of these has uh inf you know you delve you go deeper into it so how can you tell if your walls are properly insulated and air sealed and then in in massachusetts you we show the incentives that you can get an assessment i wonder what it is in in maine but you can get a home energy assessment at no cost they call it no cost in under the mass save program because really they everyone pays into it a little bit uh, so if they don't do this in maine you could model the advocacy that you want to know who's your state representatives and your state senators and say look at what they're doing in massachusetts now it's possible that you have a main save program i i don't really i would i can't say i know but uh and then once you have the assessment and they say you need insulation in the walls of your home they take 75 percent off of the cost of the insulation upgrades 
uh, they take 75% off. So, and then we have a link to the Mass Save financial incentives. And then, uh, I mean, and by the way, they seal air leaks in the home at no cost. So let's say you have recessed lighting into an attic, like I have in my house. I live in a ranch style house. Uh, they sealed, they actually, I don't know what they do right now, but they see it. There was cold air from the attic leaking into my house and the warm air was going out through. We didn't know it, but um, they sealed it and that was no cost. That's a lot of work for uh, for no cost. They don't say free because we, uh, in Massachusetts, we pay into it through the utilities. So, um, Anyway, how many people have used it? I would say probably not enough. Uh, you know, it's a lot of, to get people to pay attention, uh, no one should get frustrated. I mean, at least I don't, you know, like nevertheless, she persists as me. Uh, <laughs> you know, like I'll talk to anybody about it. I, I, where was I? Um, home energy assessment came up. I said, oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll be like out at a, a farmer's market booth. We've had a farmer's market booth and, and there's another vendor there. Uh, I don't know. And I'll say, you know, she could be from another community and I'll say, have you had your home energy assessment? And because people don't know that much about it. I'd like to know as a follow up if in Maine has, you know, what the programs are in Maine. Maybe I could help you with that. This is the, the heat pump. The next big thing is the heat pump, and that's more complicated. Uh, by the way, the bottom here goes into also the no cost home energy assessment. That's up in, in this take action tool. So uh, let's see, uh, let's go back up here. Resources, oh, uh, we got names, recommendations of landscape people who don't use leaf blowers or they do more organic work. I mean, when you stop to think about, you know, a lot of our work is uh, uh, energy efficiency and reducing um, fossil fuel use, but we also address, you know, it's a toxic pollution is another problem. And so, you know, we have uh, actually a library program and we work with the library, it's on Zoom now used to be in person. And uh, we, uh, let me get back to things you can do. Uh, we uh, list, uh, we have a list of, I don't know how many landscapers, but they, those are people who will rake your lawn and not use toxins on the lawn. I think uh, we also publicize information in, in our newsletter about, let's say like PFAS chemicals are very harmful. So uh, I bet there's things in, you know, uh, that are steps that have been taken. And I'm trying to think, I, I can't, I know, I'm pretty sure this one thing that I was told about that Maine has done that, you know, Massachusetts hasn't done yet, uh, as far as it might have something to do with uh, the PFAS chemicals. But uh, I think that uh, every community we have something to learn from every community and from individuals. Oh, one thing I want to point out, where can I find that? Uh, things you can do. Um, we have, oh, resources, tips of the week. I, uh, someone suggested this to us about four years ago. And every week we have the newsletter and every week, once in a while we repeat, but very often it's new. And it comes from like, I'm thinking, uh, let's say, is it better to wash in cold water, cold water wash than, than warm water or hot water? So I'll, I'll research it or students will research it. And we find that there's sites, you can get so many tips to share from this, there's at least 300, I think, maybe, maybe 250, All right, maybe 250. But uh, and by the way, you can get the information about uh, Newton's five-year uh, climate action plan here. And uh, zoning, why zoning is important. So there's so much information here of what a, 
a nonprofit organization can do. And I just met a lot of wonderful people from other communities in Massachusetts who are, you know, have additional ideas. And, uh, and we're all kind of, you know, we're sparked by the enthusiasm of each other and the ideas and how easy it is to, um, to take steps, those action steps. And it's so important for young people to know about it. By the way, I tell, uh, I'm speaking with educators that, you know, imagine if schools today didn't teach computer skills. Would that be preparing in the younger generation for jobs? No, you know, so we know that we need to uh, teach computer skills. So, but a lot of teachers now, if you ask teachers, what is a heat pump? Even science teachers, they probably wouldn't be able to tell you anything about it. That's technology of the future. The, the teachers in the schools need to, at least bring in people with expertise who can speak to what are the jobs of the future prepare the students for the jobs and that means even city planning infrastructure transportation uh we green newton is i said we collaborate with city leaders uh actually newton has two co-directors of sustainability they were instrumental in putting I don't, uh, in uh, maybe over, maybe around 30 locations, solar panels on schools, uh, over parking lots, public parking lots. Didn't happen overnight, but it was advocacy and, um, and the city is saving money, huge amount of money. We have solar panels in our parking lot of the library. So I know I'm giving you a ton of information. I'm so excited about everything. I'm like, why, I tell people, I need to slow down, I'm sorry. Uh, like, we, we, I'm proud of this. We donated two bus shelters that cost about 10,000. That's the part about raising funds. When you raise funds, you can do things like this. We uh, donated um, two bus shelters on bus routes uh, so that pe encourage people to take public transportation. We donated to uh, PTOs induction cooktops with pots so they can auction them off at their PTO fundraisers and then people will learn about the advantages of cooking with induction cooking. Uh, so we're in a position financially where we can really give back to the community. We donate to an environmental science program for, for students. So the word's getting out and uh, Newton's a rather well-to-do community. And so people are hearing about our work and supporting it through donations. I would like us to invigorate our programs to help environmental justice communities to do more, be able to do more like we are. But uh, we, we, we are, we've done some of that but uh, I'd like to see us do more. So I'll stop again there if you have an additional question. I find the library items very interesting and I think I will pick up on that because we're trying to do something about the usage of insecticides um, on people's lawns here. And Some some communities um, are ahead of us, uh, ahead of the one I live in. Um, so that was one thing. So I'm, I like this idea of landscapers. Um, do you have any idea how the library, they approach the landscaping businesses and ask no. them to share or, or how did that come about? Barbara, it wasn't the, we have library talks. Uh, let me, uh, if you, if you move your, uh, let me move. And where is that? The things you can do, um, resources. Okay, so GN is Green Newton. We have a speaker series that's separate from the, from the lawn care providers. We mm -hmm. asked people, 
to recommend laundry. It took a while to build a list. So okay. that's a different resource. The library speaker series, again, it, uh, you know, if you read, I don't know, you know, we uh, are uh, a certain generation still reads newspapers. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, so you can, you read a newspaper, you read about somebody who has expertise in an area, or you get it from other, other sources. I, I read, I spend, probably spend too much time on the computer reading um, uh, and looking at all kinds of resources, but we get speakers who, uh, oh, and even from the local community uh, who can speak about a sustainable housing uh, features. Or, um, or organic lawn care. You probably have people up in your area. So yeah, it's nice to get someone local. Does your library I, have a speaker program? I'm, we, they do many things, yeah, but um, that's something I might pick up on and talk okay. to people about. And we have the I, something called the Library of Things where people can borrow a ukulele or uh, that yeah, yeah. also we donated induction cooktops so people can end with a pot, a kit, so people go to the library and they can borrow it and test it out. Try, try it out. That's a good yeah. idea. I, I so recommend it. I mean, it's not, it's seriously, it's only, uh, if you cook with gas, it's only uh, $60. You'll find information about it on our, on our website yeah. too. Um, you could spend a lot of time. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of information on our website, and if you don't see it under, um, if you don't see it under a particular category, if you put it in search, then uh, then you can find it. Um, Usually, something um, something I wanted to ask when you said you donated bus shelters, would putting a solar panel on a bus shelter it it would get um, would be right. vulnerable to theft, right? It could well, not be it, done. That wasn't the problem. We did have it. What the solar bus shelter? The first one was solar. The second one was. Oh, it was okay. Then that's but then forget my question. Yeah. But but there's a but there. Uh, it the solar didn't function after a period of time. Now I have solar panels on my roof for six years, and we've had storms. You know, if you put solar panels, let's say in Florida, that would have damage you know i mean everything is uh, damaged if you're in a serious hurricane area no matter what but um my solar panels are holding up just fine but on the bus shelter they didn't so we decided we didn't put uh okay but uh, we raised the money to do it so if you're part of an organization you know you can say we're raising money for uh for a particular purpose uh, and then you can get with the tree project, we raised over fifty thousand dollars. When the project was uh, when the when the project was suggested to us by the, the students, and I go to the board of my group, and I tell them a student wants to plant trees, and uh, and you know people are cautious. I the type who usually says, "Oh yeah, let's do it," but they were they were really right. You know, you have to figure out like can we do this? And so it just was fortunate. We took a gamble. Uh, we committed to, I think 50 trees. I don't, I'm not sure how many trees, maybe 10,000. I'm not sure how much money, but uh, we committed to, but oh, maybe 1500, I don't know. But in the, but when you have young people who are, uh, who are motivated and want to get a job done, and they, they really did it. They helped to raise the fund. And people surprised us that, um, you know, one guy said, I'll do a matching grant for 5000 you know, for $5,000. And I told him, I was so happy. I told him we raised 7000 from his matching grant. And he donated more than $7,000 mm -hmm. to That's the project. Wonderful. So you never know, you know, if you have faith in people, you know, there are some people who, you know, uh, will can only afford to put, donate twenty five dollars or not donate at all, but they can donate their time. And uh, just go for it is what I tell people. You know, just I want to say for it. two two things. One little thing you said you have a niece in Portland. We have something here in Maine. It's called the Climate Initiative. Maybe you can get her to be interested in that and join. 
I would but love to, but she has an, a newborn baby, so I think we'll have to wait a, a year or two. A while. <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing, you, you listed a lot of things, and I made a note of it, and it's wonderful. But one thing, this is what I remember mainly from the city, from being in a bus and looking into people's front yards in maybe not as nice um, a city as Newton, which is a garden city, but if you are on a bus on Washington Street to Forest Hills and you can look into the front yards, people should not tar and cement every piece of land that's around, the little bit of land that's around their houses. Right, right. There's yes. something in Germany they did long ago. If you tarred all your land, you would be charged more from the water de public water department because you're keeping the water from seeping into the ground or you're causing the runoff into the... So I think trying to... I saw someone laying bricks in a driveway yesterday just for the tire to go on. So in between and on the edges, there is land. You don't have to put tar all over the drive. Okay, I'm getting and, uh, by the detailed way, about it, but no. I just want to, that has something to do with greening and green roofs. That's the other thing I do. Barbara, I, I, want, I want to say that if you would like to send me an article about that for our newsletter, that we would put it in because I think that's a one a very good idea. I'll take a picture of that driveway and of some other things that uh, blocks that let soil come through instead of having solid cover from edge to edge. Okay, I will try to get pictures in, for you. Impervious surfaces is the, uh, yeah. the topic that we've we've uh, we should focus in on uh, also then. Uh, you know, in the coming months, I would say, you know, or uh, okay. Uh, a composting, by the way, is another big deal here. We have a mm -hmm. service and about, I think maybe about 2,500 people signed up for the service. In addition to people who compost like I do in my backyard. Um, so composting is another uh, uh, way that we encourage people to we say that uh, we know that about 25% of our trash, you may have a different thing. We have trash pickup here, uh, but uh, the truck is hauling about 25% of organic, there are organic materials in, a, in the truck pickup. And so it adds to the cost of our, uh, of our uh, trash pickup. You might not up in Maine so much have, you know, like you might have a dump that you bring your, in around communities around Newton, many of them do have that. So, uh, any, let's see, let's look through here. Use activities, Kevin. Um, so, anything we can think of to that will help people to uh, become engaged in the work of uh, of an environmental activist uh, is what you'll find here. And uh, see, this says uh, five top five top climb, climate things you can do. So it's a slightly different. Here's the lawn care provider uh, information on, on our. This is our obviously our home page. So um, all this, if you do all these things, you're also helping environmental justice communities. You know, if, if Newton cuts down on us greenhouse gas emissions, that helps. We say that uh, climate change doesn't recognize uh, municipal borders. And so whatever you do in your home or on the road, in your community, in your state, impacts beyond that. And uh, it's so easy to take steps one at a time, to give thought to that. And you just feel better about yourself. <laughs> Anytime you do something good for society, uh, it's bound to make an individual feel better, no matter what you do. If you help, if you're helping people, if you're helping the planet uh, in any way, 
uh, shape or form. And it doesn't have to be limited that, you know, I'm doing only environmental good things. You know, your food pantry needs donations. So you bring, you know, donations to the food pantry or you help, uh, you know, somebody, you know, other people in need and whatever their needs are as much as you can. And that's the best therapy. Uh, I, I, there are so many people who are forlorn, you know, and a lot of bad news. And if they could just take one step at a time, do some giving back to their community, then uh, they would feel less forlorn, in, in my opinion. Don't you think? Yeah. So, and you're probably those, that kind of, if you're here doing this, then I know that you're in that category of people who, who get it. And anyone watching this, the recording is somebody who is already somebody who's wanting to make a difference. So um, I hope there'll be at least one person more <laughs> who will want to do anybody. I'll take anybody anywhere. Yeah, I like that. Um, Buy less that you, one of the things you listed, but also yes. that slogan, useless and green the rest. I think it's a wonderful thing. So it's becoming very fashionable now to go mm. to use, uh, you know, consignment stores and, and used items uh, that instead of going in, uh, to Target or no offense to Target but, or whatever these other stores are. Anyway, we are yep. getting up on the hour. And uh, so if I uh, take another question, if you have it, or if you want to wrap it up, that's up to you. I just want to say very encouraging and it broadened my uh, mind. Thank you. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. And I, as I say, it's uh, not a big group here, but uh, it's still a pleasure to have an opportunity to share the ideas. And, and if you've learned something that you can share with others, why not be glad to do it again? You know, if you, if you like, uh, you know, in a live uh, meeting or something like that, but if not, if you just want to share the, the, uh, recording, that's just fine with me too. Okay. Marcia, thank you so much. The website is such a wealth of, of information. And um, as you said, so much of it can apply to Maine. And the parts that can't apply to Maine, I hope that somebody in Maine creates a replica of this. <laughs> um, you you never know. <laughs> you never yeah, know. it's amazing. Thank yeah. you for sharing it with us. You're very welcome. It was really my pleasure. And uh, hopefully we can get young people to be able to communicate these ideas further, you know, any, especially young people, uh, any individuals. But if they can do it, then they can influence their families to, to do more. So thank you.